Okay, so uh, welcome once again to another comic review here on Universe, and this is another comic sent to us by our good friend on the channel, uh, Mount Vernon Kid. Chris, thank you again. And yeah, today I'm going to be reviewing both volumes of the... I'm going to review the complete series of the IDW comic Jinrise. Now, uh, rather than... I decided to do the whole series rather than break it up in two volumes because... A, there's only 10 issues in the, in the complete series, and I had both volumes. I don't think I'll be doing this for every, like, complete series that uh, is sent to us uh, on the channel, but um, uh, I will be doing this, like, if it's just two vol- if it's like, uh, if it's just like a whole complete series, like both volumes, if I have both, like, it's a two-volume thing, then I'll be like, yeah, I'll review the whole thing on a whole, um, unless the uh, volumes come separately. Anyway... Um, yeah, so, um, for those who are wondering what this comic is about, because this is a very lesser-known comic, but I really, if it, it, it's really, sorry, I'm getting, stumbling over my words, let me, <laughs> let me start again. This is a very interesting comic, in that it's a very cross-genre thing, and you guys, if you guys have been reading the past few comics, then you know I've had some cross-genre comics on here. I've had werewolves versus gangsters, I've had samurais versus vampires, and now, we come to Genies versus Aliens. That's right, Genies versus Aliens. You ain't never had friends like these, I'll tell you that right now. I wanted to get the Aladdin joke right out of the gate. So, the story focuses on a ma young man named Andrew who's in uh, Marrakesh when an alien race called the Cabrani attack, and he runs to a kid named U Eunice, who has a genie named Jabal under his command. And he and Jabal are close friends, and the two, it kind of actually, this whole series kind of feels like Avatar The Last Airbender in that they go on different quests, they have to run from an, you know, from an empire and a very conflicted anti-hero type villain. Um, yeah, this is very much like if Avatar The Last Airbender had aliens because they're dealing with an alien empire, which kind of remind me a lot of the Fire Nation. And the main, vil the, uh, main antagonist they have to deal with is named uh, Lashad Brim. And Lashad Brim is the uncle to uh, the leader of the aliens called the Kyber. The, uh, yeah, the Kyber is the... Imagine if Iroh was banished and Zuko became Fire Lord and learned nothing from him. It's kind of like in a weird way, imagine if Iroh was the one banished and not Zuko. That's kind of what we're looking at here. Now, the artwork in this comic is beautiful. The artwork in here is just great. It feels like it feels like this was meant to be a cartoon. Like, I would not be... I would really like it if, since, you know, you're losing your deal with, uh, Mar you know, with Disney, Netflix, how about you look into more animated shows, this right here. This, because this right here is perfect. This is like, it feels like it should be a cartoon. So... The story is the story goes is that uh, Andrew and Eunice, along with Jabal and a few other people, uh, go on quests to find the other uh, lost gene, the lost Jin in this universe, and free them. Now, what I like, like I said, the uh, the story is kind of like generic. Again, it feels a lot, a little bit like Avatar: The Last Airbender, but the artwork in here is very animated. Like again, this is it just made me think: Why hasn't this been made into a cartoon yet? Why hasn't this made into an animated series? Um, the uh, characters are all very likable. I like the little, um, everyone feels like a real character. Everyone does feel like a true, uh, real character, um, in, in, in their whole. Like, they all feel like they, like real people. And I know, like, oh, they're comic book characters, how they feel real. Just from the dialogue alone, they feel like actual, honest to God, like, they feel like you could hang out with these characters. Everyone feels a little... Uh, but the problem is, is that this comic series, disregarding the uh, one-shot focusing on, on Lashad Brim, and the story focusing on another character named Haya, which is more of a preview, really, this is a 10-issue comic, and it tries to do too much in 10 issues. This is where, the com where I feel like the comic has its biggest flaw. It feels like it has to do too much in too little time. Um, I don't know if, the, if that was the idea of just making it a 10-issue miniseries, or if it, was, if it had more in mind and wanted to do more, but it, it just got cancelled before it could, so it could only go up to 10 issues. That could be the case, too. I don't know the case. If it was meant to be a miniseries, or if it was meant to be an ongoing and just got cancelled, I don't know. I really don't know. But this 
feels really rushed in in this, especially in the second half. It really feels like it, it got the project got really rushed because there is so much revelations and so many things that happen in this comic that just make your head spin. Um, in fact, like there's even like panels that are kind of weirdly made, and it's kind of hard to track uh, um, what happens. And then sometimes you forget which characters, because again, this comic moves way too fast. Um, the artwork is great, but sometimes it feels a little too, like, muddy. Like, everything is just, like, thrown on the page, and it becomes almost, like, sensory overload. And I know, like, I'm sounding like I'm bashing on this, but it, I'm not. It's actually, this was an enjoyable comic. My problem is the pa my but the Achilles heel to this book is the pacing. It's really the pacing that does it, that does it in, because they reveal so, like, they try to do so much, like, there's a character named Harris, who is a crazy gun nut, who turns out to be an alien who survived the, uh, Kebrani uh, invasion. They suddenly have this heel turn for Lashad Rim, um, and they don't really go deep into it. There's also a little girl named Haya, who, uh, is like a, a, uh, a hand-to-hand uh, -hand fighter and really good at it, but they don't do anything with her. Um, even the main character Andrew isn't really the main character. It feels more it more becomes Eunice's story, and Andrew becomes the uh, supporting character, really. So it's more Eunice's story than than it is Andrew's. So there's no like real moment in here, but I do like the backstory with the Jin. I really do like. Um, the, the Jinn are the real characters who I think get the most character development, especially with Jabal and uh, the other character named Dairuk, who was called the Traitor of the Jinn. Um, and they go into, his, into a very interesting story of why he did the things he did and why he uh, still believes and why the Jinn were, kind, were pretty much corrupt. So, yeah, I like that... Um, but the other djinn you get in here, especially like Emlak or Adara, the other djinn in here just kind of feel like, oh, okay, they're just here. Adara gets some character moments in there with Harris, but really nothing happens. Eunice gets control of two of two genie twin brothers. They don't go in, and he the reason why he didn't want to become a djinn master was because he felt like that power shouldn't be wielded by one person. And they don't when he gets that power that doesn't really, you know, do much. Like, they don't do anything with it. So, again, the pacing is the biggest Achilles heel to this book. So, yeah. Also, I heard there's a sequel called Jinfall, which focuses on the return of the Dark Jin, but I don't know where that is. I don't know if that ever got made, or if it's, like, in hiatus. I don't know what the case is, but really, this it feels like this is an unfinished project through and through. So, I don't know what to tell you. Um... Having said that, though, it's it's pretty enjoyable, but like I said, the problem is is that the pacing is the book's Achilles heel. The artwork is great, the characters are great, and the idea of seeing genies fight aliens. Did anyone think we would ever get a comic where we would have genies, at, you know, the djinn, as um, heroes fighting an alien invasion? I'm always a sucker for these cross, uh, for like, what if this thing fought that thing? Or what if this thing fought that thing? So... That was, you know, in that regard, it was enjoyable. So, I would recommend it, but it's kind of hard to find in trade. You could probably find it on Kindle or somewhere, but I would say it's more of a low, lower price, really. But I did, I liked it, but like I said, the, the pacing is the Achilles heel of this book. So there you go, guys. That is pretty much uh, my review for uh, Jin Rise. Um, if you're interested in this book, uh, I would say give it a look. I just rhymed and I didn't mean to. <laughs> anyway, I'm a poet and I didn't know it. <laughs> but anyway, so if you've read the book Jin Rise, comment below, let us know what you guys think of it. Um, did you got, if you've read it, did you like it, did you hate it, comment below, let us know. And if you're new here, remember to Hulk smash that subscribe button and be a part of Earth's My Subscribers. I'm DPZ, and on behalf of everyone here, we will see you right here once more in the universe.